But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. I'm here to talk to you about this thing, which, uh, you know, it's this very, very fancy futuristic device, which is nicely kid compatible. Anyone want to grab that? Not the person who has crutches that I hit, but uh, um, I'll grab it. And this is great because I walk around, talk around the world, and I chuck this everywhere, and it doesn't break. And my engineering team is not always so happy because they're like, someday you're going to break it, but we have more. That is very important, though, working with children. So what is autism? Anyone know? Got an answer? I'm waiting. We'd love to know. We don't know what it is, but what we do know is that there's a lot of it. And that it's growing rapidly. The diagnosis is a huge label and probably not one condition. And if we look at it this way, in, based on the U.S. population, that's as if, compared to our whole population, everyone in those states marked in red has autism. Every single person. That's how many. It's, uh, one in 68, what does that mean? It's, it's abstract, but a whole bunch of states populated only with people with autism. So, it's huge, but there's no blood test. There's no genetic test. There's no brain scan. And then there's no pill or surgery or so forth for autism per se. So that's one of the reasons I got into this particular field, because I was feeling this unmet need, this pain and desperation, this place, this white space where the medical system couldn't really reach into enough, and the educational system couldn't really reach into enough, and the parents and the schools were desperate. So this is a good place for technology to take hold. This is a good place where technology is not going to replace you. It's not going to replace the MDs or the OTs. It's a new tool in the tool chest. And that's always the way, but in this particular area, it's particularly more important because there really wasn't a standard of medical care. Um, of course, there is. They come into your offices, but you can't give a pill to little Johnny and suddenly he swivels around and smiles at his mom and says, I love you. You can't perform some kind of um, gamma knife surgery and now the child is going to have friends and get a job. Um, these are the things that matter quite a bit and we need to find ways to fill in those gaps. But one thing that does work is uh, education, coaching, behavioral approach, someone who can work with uh, the child in a structured way to encourage certain behaviors. Because the behaviors here aren't just incidental or aren't just symptoms. They are the point. If the child isn't making eye contact, isn't relating socially, that's the impairment. And fixing that in early in life rewrites the brain, best we know. And we're trying to find that out in full high def. I won't go into all these. I'm realizing that we have sort of a compressed amount of time, so I'm going to come at it a little bit more quickly. But I do want to stress that we have a certain philosophy here. This is not a disease. This is a learning challenge. And we don't think of symptoms of autism. We think of life skills and remedial training or extra special and highly tailored training for these life skills, like looking at someone and knowing what he or she is thinking or feeling. And by the way, in the first place, looking at the person's face, where all that information lies. So let's see what comes up here. Basically, the most important thing is that since each child is different, we need to find the core features that are the most important across what people tell us, what the parents say, not necessarily the clinical descriptors, and come to things that will help tomorrow. These are things that are practical, that we don't wait for the neuroscientific story or the genetic story to be fully rendered, because 
it won't happen soon enough. These children will grow up and then they won't be integrated into society, so it'll be for the next generation. So we really need some tools now while my colleagues work on those uh, basic science answers and while clinical medicine advances. So we're all in it together and there are many stakeholders. So based on this philosophy, we've come up with this brain power system. So, so what is this? Um, it's a wearable, and children wear it, children with autism. People wonder about that, you know, will, will they put that on their faces? And they do. And here are some of these lovely faces that we've had the pleasure of meeting. And I think one thing I want to point out here is that these are people all across the spectrum. Different ages and different races, of course, but what you might not be able to see in the slides is you know, David can't talk, can't feed himself, and um, gosh, uh, Danny, they, they thought no way he could possibly put something on his head. His handler says he's in a 24-7 care facility. You put that near him, he's going to throw it across the room. Now, I wasn't so worried because I knew that you could throw it across the room. But he didn't. And he had an experience triggered by his head motions that gave him a screensaver and music. And he enjoyed that and he slowed down and he calmed and his handler says, I've never seen him like this. Never. And he started cuddling with her. <laughs> and it was amazing. And then, you know, he, he's in constant motion, this, this young man, just constantly in motion. And you kind of don't know, well, it's on his head, but is it now just because he's lost control? He can't even take it off. So she says, okay, finally, you know, it's enough, enough, uh, it's time to go, just give the, the thing back to the doctor, and um, he just pulls it off and holds it out for me. And he gimbals it. I mean, he's still moving, but he's holding it steady for me. He was perfectly aware of what was going on, and he wanted that on. And for the first time, possibly, he had a private experience that no one else understood. So he was the one who got the joke. And I think that's part of what we're trying to give. And this is, those were before and after photos, so here they are interacting.